Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and in this video we're going to be taking a look at how to create this search bar right here using HTML and CSS. So of course if I was to hit enter right here it submits the page with a query string inside the URL bar. So um, this will be done from scratch and the reason why it is number one is because I might be doing more of these in future so of course uh, I'm going to name this number one. So let's go inside this file right here and begin on the HTML and CSS to create that search bar. So inside the text editor we have uh, this right here. So um, it's uh, pretty plain, nothing much going on. However, I have included Google material icons up here inside the head of the page. So I'm going to be using this icon set to create the magnifying glass icon as the search bar um, button but you can use your own icon set if you wish um, everything should still work um, just as it would if you were using um, these icons so I'll leave a link to this in the description you can go ahead and um, include this inside your head as well if you wish to use Google material icons okay so inside the HTML let's begin on the HTML um, structure for the search bar. So first off, let's make a new form. Um, let's make it a get um, a get method because most uh, most search bars uh, will submit a get request, so it appears in the URL bar. Okay, so the action is going to be the same page as we are currently on. Okay. So all this stuff is completely optional. Um, if you don't want to use a form, you don't have to. But um, I think in most cases, you're going to be using a form. So um, the actual search bar itself is going to be contained within a div. And the reason for that is so we can sort of contain both the input and the actual button to search. So let's make a new div here with a class of search bar. Okay. Cool. Inside here, we're going to have two elements, first one being the input and the second one being the button. So let's make a new input right here with a type of text, of course. Let's give it a class of search bar underscore underscore input. So using the BEM, the block element modifier uh, naming convention here, you can, of course, name your classes whatever you like. Okay, cool. So let's give it a name of search. Okay, so obviously that's the name that uh, that'll be submitted to the server, and the placeholder. Very important. Let's make this something like search videos, for example. So um, that's it for the input. So now for the actual button. So let's make a new button with a type of submit. Of course, uh, with this type of submit, it basically means that if I was to press the button, it'll submit the form that it is inside. So, of course, this form right here. So, with a type of submit and also a class of search bar underscore underscore button. Once again, you can name your classes whatever you like. Okay. Inside here, we can then uh, obviously include the icon, the magnifying glass icon. So, uh, the way you do this using Google material icons is you make a new i tag with a class of material dash icons and inside the actual um, the text of the tag you put the name of the icon in this case there is an icon inside the library called search so I'm putting search here and that will create the magnifying glass okay so that is all for the HTML if I was to save this and refresh we have this result right here it's actually looking pretty decent so far, but of course, let's add the CSS to make it into something like this. Okay, so back inside here, let's head over to the um, the style tag and begin with the search bar itself. So let's target the search bar class. Let's give it a width of 100%, okay, and then a max width of 300 pixels. So basically, it means that the search bar is going to be 100% width um, with a maximum of 300 pixels. Okay, so uh, essentially uh, when you scroll down or when you go on a smaller screen, uh, like a mobile phone for example, the width is going to be 100% or a max of 300. Okay, we're also going to give it a display of inline flex. Of course, the reason for a flex box here is because we can easily position the input 
and the button. Okay, and that is all we need for the search bar itself. The main one is of course going to be the input and the button. So let's go down here and let's now target the search bar input. So down here we can say search bar underscore underscore input. We can make this a flex grow of one. Okay, the reason for that is because we want the search bar input to take up the remaining horizontal space. Okay, so basically um, the search bar button is going to have a fixed width and then of course the input should be the remaining width and that's what flex grow one is going to do. Okay, we're going to give it a padding of 10px that's just surrounding the actual text input. Um, an outline of none. This will prevent um, a lot of the browser's default blue outline around the input when you are focused on it. Okay. Let's give it a border of 1px solid and then 009879. That is the color for decode. Okay, of course, choose your own color. All right. Let's give it a border radius of, if I can spell it, yeah. So border radius of 5px, 0, 0, 5px. This will make a smooth border on the top left and the bottom left. Okay. Um, a background of a very light version of your border. So basically, um, get your border color and then choose a lighter version such as something like up here and then make that your background. So I'm going to copy this, go down here, just like that. I'm going to hover over in VS Code. You can, of course, use whichever color picker you like. Um, and I'm going to go up the top left corner and basically pick something like this. Now, I've already got a color code written down, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, make this uh, F4, FA, F9. And that's what I had for the uh, demonstration example. Okay. Now, we're also going to make a transition here of background 0 0.25 seconds and box shadow 0 0.25 seconds. So later on, we're going to add a focus uh, pseudo class to um, the input. And basically, of course, when you hover, sorry, when you when you gain focus on the input, it's going to change the background color and also the box shadow. And we want these two to be animated as they change. So that's the reason for the transition property right there. Speaking of that, let's go ahead now and actually create that focus pseudo class. So let's copy this down here and say dot search by input on focus. We're going to change the background to be white and the box shadow to be 002px. And then you want to get a slightly darker version of your background color up here. So again, I'm going to go ahead here. I'm going to say hash 8cc6ba. And that right there is a darker version of um, uh, the light color chosen down here. Of course, it's from the same color palette as the border color. So keep everything uniform um, with the same color. Okay, cool. So um, let's just save this and refresh and see how we're actually going. So um, in the browser, let's refresh and we have this result right here. So we can see we get um, uh, the lights uh, border. We have, if I was to focus it, it changes to be white and we get a nice subtle box shadow around the input on focus. So looking pretty decent so far. And we can see we have um, the border radius here on the top left and the bottom right. We're going to add the same border radius to the top um, right and the bottom right of the search button. Okay, but for now, let's go back inside here and add the final touch to the input. So let's once again copy this. And we're going to say this time we're going to target the placeholder pseudo element. So here, um, this is going to style um, the placeholder text. Uh, in this example, it's going to be search videos. So um, this is going to simply be um, the same color as your box shadow. So essentially changing the text color uh, right there. Let's save this and refresh and keep an eye on the color here. By refresh, we get a nice... Uh, green um, on the placeholder text. Okay, so little things like that make a big difference when it comes to what the final result will look like. So that is all for the input itself. So now let's move on to the button. So back inside here, 
uh, let's target the search bar uh, button pseudo class. Let's give it a width, so a fixed width. Remember, um, the input's going to take up the remaining width minus the width of the button. So in this example, I think 40px is a good width for the button. The background is going to be the same color as the border of the input. So let's copy this color up here and paste it down here. Let's give it a text color of white. Of course, this makes your, your magnifying glass icon to be white. Uh, similar to the input, an outline of none to prevent the, um, I think it's a yellow outline uh, when you focus on the button. Let's give it a border of none. This removes the default border um, that you get, which is typically gray on most browsers. Let's display this as flex. Let's align the items to the center and justify content to the center. And these three properties essentially are going to completely center horizontally and vertically your search icon. Okay. Um, this may be optional. Sometimes you might find your icon is already in the center, but this right here basically makes sure your icon is complete center on the button itself. Uh, let's add a border radius of 0, 5px, 5px, and then 0. We can see here that this is basically um, uh, the inverse of the border radius on the input. So 5px, 0, 0, 5px, this is 0, 5px, 5px, 0. So this will, of course, ensure we get the top right and the bottom right border radius on the button. And also a cursor of pointer, very important for a bit of user feedback when you're hovering over um, uh, the actual button and user select as being none. This just ensures they can't actually highlight the icon. It makes it look a bit nicer. Okay, let's save this and refresh and we have this result right here. Looking pretty good so far. In fact, it's basically done. There's one more thing to do and that is to have the button have this darker color when you select it. So uh, back inside here, Let's uh, add an active pseudo class to the button. So say like, uh, search bar button. When it gets active, when you're actually pressing on the button itself, let's add a box shadow of inset 0, 0, 30px and then a 25% opaque black. And this is like a little trick you can do um, to basically uh, use the existing background color and just make it look a bit darker without having to add a different background color on the active pseudo class itself, just simply add a box shadow and say it's insert. So I can save this and refresh and we have here our completed search bar. I can then type inside here, uh, decode, press enter and it works just fine. We get a question mark in the query string, search equals decode. And that is how you can make a styled search bar using plain HTML and CSS. All right. I'll also leave a link to the entire code in the description on CodePen. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.